Welcome back to the channel, Puppy One Kenobi. This is the final video for the Tamiya Ford GPA Jeep. In this video, I will show you how I use pastels to weather most vehicles. Pastels are cheap and come in a variety of colors. You will want to use the dry pastels, not the oil kind. The trick with pastels is to grind them into a fine powder. When I first started working with pastels, I sanded them down by scraping them on coarse sandpaper. However, I have found that they can be crushed with a heavy tool like a hammer, and the process is much, much faster. I like to place the chalk into a plastic bag, then crush and transfer the contents into little plastic cups with lids. You can mix chalks to create a wide variety of colors and shades, rendering the prepackaged modeling pastels obsolete. The first step in beginning to weather with pastels is to begin by choosing several colors to work with. I like to use different shades because dirt has different colors depending on how dry it is, and dirt changes color depending on its locale. For this reason, I like to have at least three colors at the ready, and then layer these colors rather than just randomly placing them on the vehicle. The next step is to choose a fixer that is a liquid that will bind the pastels to the surface. Some people like to add the fixer to the model first, then the pastels. Others prefer to add the pastels, then apply the fixer. I typically go with the former, however, much of the time the fixer and pastels will both get mixed on the brush. The fixer I prefer is Turpanoid. Turpanoid is easily activated, which allows for mistakes to be removed. Manufactured fixer, like the kind provided by AK Interactive, find it in a more permanent fashion, so again, I prefer the cheaper and easier method I will always start the process from the underside of the vehicle. This allows me to have a palette to work off of, and since the bottom is rarely visible, allows for experimentation. Once I've found a combination of colors I like, I will work that color scheme up along all sides of the vehicle. You can start with the darker shade, then layer each lighter shade on top, or work in the reverse order, with light shades becoming progressively darker. Both can give some interesting results. Whatever color scheme I choose, it should be inside the wheel wells and all around the wheels. Once you've applied some colors, you will want to either wait for the pastels to dry or speed up the drying process by using a heat gun. As the turpanoid evaporates, you will find that the pastels are dramatically lighter than when they were wet. Aside from dirt effects, I also use pastels with the vehicle base color, in this case a light olive drab. Here I create a slightly different shade of the base color for the fabric of the seat cushions. Again, mixing different pastel chalk colors to achieve different shades. Another weathering technique I love is splattering heavily thinned oil paints to the model. Splattering is achieved by pressing the hairs of a soaked brush against a toothpick. As the hair is flung past the toothpick, the heavily thinned paint is flicked onto the model, creating the effect of oil or mud and water splatter. This effect can be toned down depending on how little paint is used, and can easily be blended with a Q-tip. Blending the splatters can create a discoloration to the paint not unlike the effect achieved with dot filters. Here I am using a thin black oil and flicking it onto surfaces that have heavy pastel work. This allows the monotony of dirt colors to be broken up while the splatter effect is seen clearly because of the contrast between the black and the light dirt colors. It is best to use the blended effect liberally while reserving the oil splatter effect at only a few places. Now this effect, which I usually reserve for the very, very last step, is a bit strange. I grew up in the era of dry brushing highlights all over the vehicle in order to bring out details that would be lost. While this effect has some validity today, I don't see many modelers using it, at least not as heavily as you might find, say, in a Shepard Payne book. The effect I like is rather than dry brushing a highlight, dry brushing a darker color. This effect is achieved by adding just a little bit of sooty black, usually a mixture of the base color, black, and brown. Then I lightly scuff the areas that see wear. This effect might be considered similar to chipping, but it really isn't. I can't recall where I picked this up, whether I saw another modeler do it or I just happened upon it. This effect may seem counterintuitive, but looks especially convincing over the pastel work. This reminds me of the technique of adding charcoal highlights to a model to create a metal effect, but without the sheen. This completes the build. I hope you've enjoyed following along and were able to learn something from these build videos. If you have, please subscribe, as I will be creating build videos for each of my future models here on out. Thanks again for watching.